Top 10 Things to Do in Sri Lanka Plus One Crazy Thing Hello and welcome to our video on the top 10 things to do in Sri Lanka plus one crazy thing. Sri Lanka is a beautiful island nation in the Indian Ocean, known for its lush tropical forests, golden sandy beaches, and ancient temples and ruins. It's a country with a rich culture and history. There's so much to see and do here. So, without further ado, let's get started on our list of the top 10 things to do in Sri Lanka. Number one, make sure to eat some kotu roti. Sri Lankans love kotu roti. You can get chicken or fish with steamed vegetables, roti, and a fried egg. When ingredients are poured onto a metal griddle and chopped up with two metal blades, they often make a loud clink sound that can be heard hundreds of feet away. Kotu roti is sold all over the island, but the best places to get it are the Hotel de Pilawus or Hotel de Plaza in Colombo. Some Sri Lankan restaurants are often named hotels. Don't be fooled by the Pilawus and Hotel de Plazas on Galle Road in Colombo. Milo, a cold chocolate malt drink, goes well with hot kotu. Number two, View the sunrise over Little Adams Peak. Ella's Little Adams Peak is a well-known and easy day trip. Adams Peak is different. It's a holy mountain near Hatton with 5,000 steps. Start your hour-long hike at night to see the sunrise from the top of the hill. You can hike to Ella Rock and Nine Arch Bridge if you want more obstacles. Ella is a quiet city. Cafe Chill and Art Cafe Umbrella are great places to learn about local culture, even though many tourists stay outside town. Those who lack excitement will enjoy zip lining. Since everyone pays attention to Wella, Ohaya, Idalgashina, Haputale, and Wellawaya should also be recognized. Number three, take a trip to Kalpitiya Peninsula for some kite surfing. Some of the best kite surfing in the world can be found in the lagoons and flat water of Sri Lanka's northwest coast. The Kalpitiya Peninsula, which is 3.5 hours north of Colombo, has recently become popular with tourists from other countries. Wild donkeys live near the area's beautiful beaches and charming coastline towns. Kite Center Sri Lanka is in Kapaladi on the Indian Ocean. The kite school plans safaris to Donkey Point, Dutch Bay, and Vela Island for people who are already good at kite surfing. Kapaladi also has kayaking in the lagoons and tours where you can responsibly see hundreds of free swimming spinner dolphins. Trustworthy tour guides use small boats, stay away from the pods, and never feed the animals. Kapaladi also has places to stay right on the beach. Number four, set your camp in the Hapitale mountain. The foggy highlands of Hapitale, an area filled with tea plantations and icy cold streams, are just an hour away by bus from Ella. Camp at the local family-run campground, like the Diaz family-run eco-lodge Hapitale. After a round of sweet milk tea at their house, you'll be shown through a tea garden and onto their campsite, which consists of a collection of tents, a kitchen, and a dining area with views of the Capitale Mountains. The highlight of any stay here is in the morning when you can hear birds singing and watch the sunrise. Number five, visit Bandala National Park and watch the birds. Bandala National Park is a Ramsar recognized wetland in the country south and is home to almost 200 species of local and migratory birds. The park comes alive at 6 a.m. with Brahmini kites, hundreds of storks, families of whistling wild ducks, Asian green bee eaters, dancing peacocks, and resting crocodiles, and bird watching trips go for three to four hours. Afternoon saw wild Asian elephants, spotted deer, and wild boar foraging amid weira, neem, and palu trees. To go on to hunt for them, you need to book a 4x4 safari with a company like Bundala Safari with Surumal, which has a location just outside the park at Bundala Junction. Number six, the train ride from Colombo. Train rides are one of the many things to do in Sri Lanka. From Colombo to Sri Lanka, the scenery is lovely. Along the way, you will see the Nine Arches Bridge, several tea plantations, old train stations from when the British were in charge, and roaring waterfalls and rivers. Even though there were a lot of trains en route, you should still book your train tickets ahead of time, but it shouldn't be over. Take the train from Colombo to Gali along the coast to see palm trees and the Indian Sea. Next, take a train north to Jaffna. Instead of rice farms and coconut grooves, Jaffna has palmyra trees and bushes. Several vendors sell tea, instant coffee, chili dusted fresh fruits, roasted peanuts, yogurt, and top-up phone cards on trains. They are used to families, tourists, and people going to work. Number seven, eat plenty of fresh crabs in Sri Lanka. In contrast to their popularity in Singapore's high-end restaurants, Sri Lankan crabs are only sometimes found on Sri Lankan menus, but things are changing. If you want a sophisticated taste of crab in Colombo, visit the Fat Crab or Marine Drive or the Ministry of Crab at the Dutch Hospital Complex. There's no better place to get a taste of local life than at the Mayura Hotel, located in the heart of Petter Market. 
we highly recommend the Jaffna Crab Curry from Cozy Restaurant, located close to the Jaffna Railway Station, if you find yourself in the northern part of the nation. Number 8. Visit the Wilpatu National Park in Sri Lanka to see the elusive leopards. Most of Yala National Park's tourists go there in search of the critically endangered Sri Lankan leopard. However, crowding is typical, and safari 4x4s often drive so close to the wildlife that the animals flee. Visit Wilpatu National Park, northwest of the island, and book your safari with the reputable company like Leopard Trails for a more fun and less harmful trip. Their guides don't follow leads, but they shut down their vehicles when they get close to wildlife. In addition, they will whisper in the area of any sighting so as not to frighten the animals. The park is full of animals in their natural habitats, like Asian elephants, sloth bears, bark deer, and leopards. Kumana National Park, located in eastern Yala, is another option for bird watchers. You could find a leopard taking a snooze on top of a rough rock if you're lucky. Number 9. The world's largest gathering of free-ranging Asian elephants. An estimated 4,000 wild Asian elephants call Sri Lanka's national park home. During the dry months of July through September, herds of wild Asian elephants gather at large pools in Kuldulla and Minaria National Parks to eat grass, bathe and play with each other. Elephants take refuge in the adjacent woods during the hottest part of the day, emerging very slowly at about 4pm. This is the largest annual gathering of wild elephants anywhere, so take advantage of your opportunity to view hundreds of them lounging about the lakes. Except for the elephant transit home in Odawalawe, you should only visit locations where elephants are kept in captivity. The Born Free Foundation and the government's wildlife division for orphaned and wounded elephant calves before releasing them back into the wild. Number 10. Eat authentic Sri Lankan food like rice and curry in Unawatuna. Meta's home-cooked meals, nestled among Unawatuna's cafes and souvenir shops in Sri Lanka's south, is one of the best places to sample the national cuisine, which Sri Lankans eat at least once a day and sometimes or three times a day. Auntie Meta's freshly made Sri Lankan dal in coconut milk was made on site, with some help from the family. Visit the family-run Sea Waves restaurant in Unawatuna if you're interested in learning how to make authentic Sri Lankan curry. And don't leave without ordering the entire butterfish, which is cooked in a special sauce that's bursting with umami. Now it's time to do one crazy thing in Sri Lanka. Before we move to the crazy thing, hit the thumbs up icon below and like this video. Visit the Sea Tigers Submarine Yard. The Sea Tigers Submarine Yard, located in the northeastern part of Sri Lanka, is a formal naval base and shipyard used by the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam during the Sri Lankan Civil War. Visitors to the submarine yard can see several remnants of the LTTE's naval operation, including the submarine pens. The submarine pens were used to conceal and protect the LTTE submarines from airstrikes and naval attacks. They are now open for visitors to explore and see the size and scale of the submarine pens. The ships and boats. Visitors can see several ships and boats used by the LTTE, including small submarines and suicide boats. Some of these vessels have been damaged or destroyed in war, providing a poignant reminder of the conflict. The War Memorial. The submarine yard includes a war memorial dedicated to the LTTE fighters who lost their lives in the conflict. It's a place to pay respect to the fallen soldiers. The War Museum. The submarine yard also features a war museum, which provides visitors with a detailed look at the history of the LTTE and the Civil War. Visitors can see photographs, weapons, and other artifacts related to the conflict, nature, and wildlife. The submarine yard is also home to various wildlife, including bird species and monkeys. Visitors can take a nature walk to explore the surrounding area and see the region's natural beauty, the local community. Visitors can also interact with the local community and learn about their daily lives and experiences during the Civil War. The Sea Tiger Submarine Yard is a sobering reminder of the brutal civil war in Sri Lanka. It gives visitors a unique opportunity to learn more about the conflict and its impact on the country. However, it's important to remember that a visit to the submarine yard is not recommended for sensitive visitors as it might cause distress due to the graphic nature of war. That concludes our list of the top 10 things to do in Sri Lanka, plus one crazy thing. We hope you found this video informative and helpful in planning your next trip to this beautiful country. Thank you for watching.